Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Connected Learning TV. This is a production of the National Writing Project's Educator Innovator Project, and today is January 23rd, 2019. I'm Christine Cantrell. I'm from the National Writing Project, and I'm super excited to host this webinar today with Lainey Castle from ALA, the American Library Association. Uh, today, we'll be hearing from colleagues from the Red Cedar Writing Project. They're based in East Lansing, Michigan. And they, in September, uh, did a, uh, hosted both a screening and followed by a community conversation at the East Lansing Public Library. Um, and they're here to talk to us about it and share what they did and why they did it and how it unfolded and what they learned. Um, and then um, after we hear from them, we'll have a chance to um, open it up for um, questions and potentially discussion, questions and answers and discussion about this work. Um, the other group of people that we're joined with here are um, uh, mostly librarians. They represent 20 libraries from around the country. All of you have received an American Creed Community Conversation Grant from ALA and Citizen Film. The funding for this grant was provided for the National Endowment for Humanities. So we both thank um, uh, NEH for that support and congratulate you all as grantees in this project. And I want to just turn it over to Lainey Castle to say some words and give us a little context for this work. Sure. Thank you, Christina, and thank you for all your work coordinating this webinar today. I'm Lainey Castle. I'm with the ALA Public Programs Office, and we're really happy to be working in partnership both with the National Writing Project and Citizen Film to bring American Creed Community Conversations programming to libraries around the country. It seems more important than ever that libraries are taking an active role offering programs that engage the public in respectful dialogue about issues that matter. I read a lot of your proposals and I'm really excited about all of the plans that you've already developed for your communities. So as you're moving forward in the grant term, please, if you have the time, share your questions, your ideas, successes and lessons learned on our project discussion list. We are all really eager to hear about how things are going for you. And of course, reach out to us at any time if you have questions or there's anything we can do to support you. Um, so to our, I think, 20 uh, library representatives here today, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We really appreciate it. We're excited to have you here and welcome. Excellent, great, thank you. Um, so our plan today is to spend about 15 to 20 minutes hearing from Trixie Smith and Aram Cambodian from East Lansing. Um, they're both my colleagues at the Writing Project, and they'll tell us about their screening and the community conversation. Then we'll open the floor here to grantees, um, to you all asking questions. Um, if time allows, we can have some discussion back and forth. I would encourage you all to use the chat feature here to post questions along the way. So we won't interrupt Trixie and Aram when they're, when they're sharing, but if you want to start to add some questions to the chat, those are the ones we can pick up on when we, um, when we open the floor. Um, and then if you use the mute um, on and off, um, that'll help cut down on the background noise um, and allow for the camera also to stay on Trixie and Aram. And then we'll all be good colleagues and remind you to put turn the mute off when it's uh, when you were new trying to talk because you always have to remember that. So without further ado, um, I'd love to invite Trixie and Aram to start by introducing themselves and then to sort of enter us into this story of what happened in East Lansing. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, um, Lainey. Um, I'm Trixie Smith. I am the director of the Red Cedar Writing Project, and I'm at Michigan State University. And um, my colleague here, I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Aram Kabodian, and I have uh, I'm just recently retired. I've uh, been teaching in the middle school and high school uh, venues in English and special ed for about 26 years. I'm also a teacher consultant teacher consultant at the Red Cedar Writing Project, uh, where Trixie is our leader. So um, Christina asked us how we got started in this project and, and how it kind of grew. It really started because a number of our um, teacher consultants, our TCs, were invited into early stages of the development of American Creed and thinking about 
um, pedagogical tools for it while the film was still in editing. So we had a number of um, TCs involved in that process. So they had, we had early conversations about the film and what it might um, be and how we could use it in our classrooms and use it with our students. So um, there, there was some excitement about it and some buzz about it among um, our cohort. And then um, we took a, a number of these people went with us when we went to the annual meeting for um, the National Writing Project year before last. And um, there was a public showing of American Creed at that point and some conversation about it and in this open forum. And we're like, we should do this at home. We should have these conversations. We should share this with our teachers. We should share it with the community. So we actually had our first sharing with our teachers. We um, showed it at um, a summer event that we were having and um, shared that with teachers, had some really great conversations about it, talked about um, ways that they could use it with their students, the kinds of conversations they might have, how they could relate it to various topics and um, things in their curriculum. And then from there, we um, kind of simultaneously started having a conversation about how could we have this um, in a public venue here in the area. So that's where um, ARM kind of took over. Yeah, I was thinking that I probably should have said two more things about my introduction. I was uh, the moderator for the discussion after we showed American Creed. And I was also one of the people, the TC she's talking about that was, um, was a part of the um, formation of, of, um, of the movie from a teacher point of view, I wouldn't, didn't actually make the movie or anything. Right. I just was, uh, I saw it go through some edits and I, I was part of a discussion on how to present it uh, within our communities. Um, but through that, I, I got quite a, a enthusiasm for the movie. I, I was looking for as many ways to share it in the community as possible in uh, kind of some meaningful context. And uh, so I, I started working with our local library and, uh, started to you know, reach out to the uh, outreach person there at the library and uh, through some discussions, uh, we ended up uh, showing it and having a great um, meaningful discussion. I don't wanna get lost in here. Where, where are we in the, in the agenda, people? Should I, should I, let me share some of the slides, some of just a bit real fast from, and maybe you can talk us through these. Okay. So one of the things that um, Christina asked us to think about and to talk about today was how we thought about and designed the event to support a healthy community conversation in relation to the screening. So we don't just want to show the film, we do want to have this community conversation. And um, I, I will say that Arm really did all the legwork on this and then reached out to me um, towards the end. But so I'll let him um, talk to you about what he was thinking about that conversation and how to make it happen? Well, it just seemed that at this time in our uh, nation's history that uh, we need to find ways to come together. And this movie was such a, an excellent example of that. And so I, um, I just, the more I talk to people about it, they all seem to be interested in uh, finding, uh, you know, some sort of context where we could just sit down and talk and what you're seeing now are videos, uh, are photos of the, the evening. Uh, there's uh, a, one of the teachers who showed the video, Dawn Reed, there on the screen, and her two students who ended up being uh, two of our panelists. Uh, they had seen the video ahead of time and uh, were, uh, I think, very well prepared to uh, speak from their heart about how the video impacted them and how it could uh, act as a vehicle for more conversations. Uh, you might have seen in a couple of the other slides that there was another, there was a, a singer. And uh, I guess I'll go into that now. Uh, there, there ended up being a little bit of a, a scheduling snafu uh, with the date. And there was uh, this singer, David Roth, who was uh, scheduled oh, to be there also that same night. So we ended up combining it and it worked out so oh, much, yeah. uh, so well that it was almost, it couldn't have been better. It was like Providence sort of thing. Uh, he, he 
sang for I think it was a half an hour and then uh, and his songs were like folk songs and some of them had to do with the national identity and he actually brought us together at the end with a song after the whole discussion so it was a uh, sort of serendipity that uh, he was uh, able to add to uh, the evening and there are our four panelists uh, we we had uh, the two students on the right uh, Sophia and Sovan and then uh, Going from right to left, uh, Chad Grant uh, was a member of the govern government relations uh, committee in our area. And then on the left is uh, Dr. Best German, the assistant dean in the Honors College uh, and the diversity coordinator for the Honors College at MSU. I was gonna talk about them a little later, so I, I, I want to get to that. Are there any more pictures? I can't remember what else we have there. Okay, great. Uh, that's nice Nice this little sample. Flyer he made, yeah. yeah, so as you can see, we uh, did the, oh, the uh, screening from 6.30 to 8, and then we had a uh, discussion from about 8 to maybe 8.40 or so. It, it went a little over the 8.30 time we had on that, that one screen. So um, are we moving into kind of the design of it? Is that where we are? Anybody? Yes, that'll be fun. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So, so we, <laughs> we, we had to... Uh, we had this notion that a panel would help make the connection between the, the movie and the audience and start to kind of uh, begin the conversation, that they would, um, you know, engage the conversation in a way that I as moderator might not be able to, to get started. And it really worked well. Each of these four people brought their own unique gifts. Uh, we, um, we did reach out to a wide variety of people um, tried to uh, speak with uh, colleagues, friends of colleagues, parents of students, students from um, kind of high school up, and uh, tried to look at uh, people on what you might say both sides of the aisle and independence. Um, MSU is a, a little bit of a liberal community and we didn't want to just have one side represented there. We, I you know, tried to approach uh, I don't know, probably six to 10 uh, folks that um, I perceived as being a little bit more conservative or independent. And, uh, you know, I'm unfortunately not too many of them were able to be there. Uh, the, the students, I think, uh, came offering, um, you know, I think a fairly open minded, um, you know, youthful, energetic. <laughs> Uh, opinion. Uh, they had some great insights. The um, thing that Chad added, I think, was that, um, let's see, I want to say that. Uh, his work in the uh, government relations uh, kind of, I think, guaranteed that he was going to try and treat it with the, the, the topic with respect, with um, kind of an open minded, um, this is how it impacts the community and kind of a practical approach. And uh, uh, Bess, I thought, did uh, a nice job at um, her her um, you know, diversity coordinator role was, I think, helpful in that she saw kind of that used the different personalities of all the people who were interviewed in the in the uh, film and kind of brought them to light. She she talked about how uh, they uh, kind of showed the richness of our uh, American landscape. Um, I have. Uh, it was a very powerful night. It's, it's hard to kind of put into words, really. I, I was really impressed with our panel, really pleased that they were there. Uh, they uh, got the, the kind of the ball rolling after I had asked one question, and then uh, we went, came, kind of came back to some of my questions. Um, I had three questions to start the evening, ready to go, and um, I think you're going to get a copy of this somewhere it's probably i think the I think christina said that you'll have a have a link to this but uh, the three questions i had were essentially what was the biggest takeaway from the film for you and then what beliefs or creeds come out of the film and then the third one was uh the film talks about service and how we are in this all together how does that fit with our materialistic culture so I, I started the discussion with that first question what's the biggest takeaway for you and then the the panelists just jumped in and each addressed that and then it 
sort of revolved over to the audience and we called on a few audience members. About halfway through the discussion, I felt like uh, the second question about the uh, creed hadn't been really fully addressed. So I asked that question and uh, I think it was Chad popped in and then one of the students, I think Sovan, and then uh, another audience question. So it, it was a really free flowing, I don't know, um, powerful, thoughtful time. I think uh, both sides of the, um, uh, I think the, the movie highlighted so many things that uh, even, I think people's eyes were open uh, in some, some ways about what the other side was thinking about um, you know, each other. Um, also, in terms of pace, I have written on this side here to talk about pace. Um, there were a few times when there was just some silence and it, you know in our culture silence is sort of an awkward thing but it, it was sort of a time to digest and really think about what, what was being said before it moved on so I, I didn't really press that as moderator I didn't like feel like I needed to fill every second um, I thought the silence was useful in that sort of let's just digest and think before we step ahead you know pell-mell um, let me take a look back over here, what I haven't said. Um, Trixie, am I missing anything? Um, I think you've got the, the main things. One thing I would say, and I think somebody asked this already, is that the audience was, was quite a range. We had um, other high school students, some who would come to support their colleagues, and um, another one of our teacher consultants had brought some of her journalism students. They were um, doing a write-up about it. Um, but then there were some college students, people I had invited here from the university. There were definitely a number of um, adults in the community, some who were, who were friends and fans of the singer who started and then stayed for the thing. Some of them had like grandkids with them. So there was this wide range, I would say, from like eight years old to people in their 60s and 70s. Um, across the evening, we had, um, I think the final number ended up being like 48 attendees um, across um, the whole. And I wouldn't say that all 48 were there the, the whole entire time. Um, but there was a little bit of in and out. I think um, some people kind of went into the library and came back into the, um, the viewing room over time. But um, everyone was very respectful and um, a lot of people were really interested in the conversation in the end and being a part of that um, conversation. Yeah, well, one of the things in my notes that I didn't mention that I think was important was uh, after the film and before I started asking questions, I offered one kind of personal piece. I'm a, I'm a poet and I sort of couldn't help but uh, kind of add a little bit of my story to personalize it and um, make it um, not just some film, but a, a film that impacted me. So I, I shared a poem about my, my, my grandparents and about uh, my heritage and about kind of my love of the country. Uh, there's a line called, uh, they were led to this more perfect place. It's that no notion that, you know, we kind of have this nation of immigrants and I, I wanted to kind of you know, value that a little bit. So um, there was that, but then I also just spent a lot of time just reading the panel and seeing if uh, you know one person was talking a little bit too much, I was asking the other person uh, in the panel a question and trying to get the audience as involved as possible by making sure that when somebody had their hand up or something that they were uh, addressed. That was one of my roles. So I know just just as a visual, we had the um, the four panelists up in front, as you saw in the photo. I was physically between the two of them off to the side sitting in a chair so that I could kind of swivel back and forth and the audience was you know facing the panelists. We did have a microphone to help facilitate that. Um, the microphones with the panelists worked fine the whole evening. The portable mic that um, Arm was using kind of kicked out on us but he has teacher voice so it was fine. <laughs> And um, the room was not that big anyway. Um, the um, 
the adult services librarian who was the person that we were working with, she's a bit soft spoken. So I think she wanted to make sure we had the mic to begin with as she introduced things. And so then it became a, a good tool, I think, and it's something I would probably plan for in the future too. Right, most of the audience members who spoke uh, didn't seem to need a mic either. They were pretty right. loud, but I think having a mic for the audience would have been helpful uh, too, just to have some of the quieter speakers be heard a little bit better by everyone. So that would be a, a recommendation too. Um, so since we've gone into logistics, I, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and talk um, about some of um, the how it happened kind of things, if, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, as Aram mentioned, we, he began with discussions at the library. The, um, the community coordinator that we were working with actually took a new job in the middle of this process. And so um, the adult services librarian kind of got this handed off to her. So at the beginning or the end of the summer, beginning of the fall term, we were working with this new person I think that's probably how the scheduling overlap happened. But um, as, as Arm said, it just worked out. So we worked with her to, um, to do the PR. She actually created the flyer using some of the materials provided um, by American, the, excuse me, by American Citizen. And then um, um, the flyer was distributed a lot through social media, a lot of um, Facebook posting, um, listservs, um, Facebook groups. Um, it was definitely on the kiosk, as you saw, for the library. They also had some separate posting in their um, location. I was definitely putting it up around here um, at the university and sharing it on listservs here at the university. I know, Aram, you had some up at your church, which is actually um, in the same community area as the library and some of those things. So we tried um, to do that. If I had a little more time, this is one of the things I would do differently. I, we would, I would do more um, targeted advertising to um, different groups. Um, Aram mentioned trying to get a range of community members and attendees there, and I think um, if we could do some more targeted um, advertising, making sure that flyer got to very specific groups of people um, who do have a broad range of interests and, and trying to get um, more people there in that instance you never know when you pick a date and a night what else is going to be happening and um you know what other commitments people are going to have so um i think in general we were pleased with the turnout um <clears throat> along that line i would also say that if we were going to do it again i would have uh, specifically asked the high school uh, to uh, share the information with the students with the teachers the high school and the library are practically next door to each other and it would have been i think a little bit more powerful to have just a few more high school students there uh, to hear what they had to say about it to kind of add to the energy and uh let's see that was one other thing uh, also just in terms of the um the process uh i would recommend uh splitting up the work and not trying to do it all yourself i, I know that uh one of the keys to making it work for us was having uh, the Annie Gordon from the library uh, do some of the work and and help with the logistics and and you know, Trixie's help with the promotion of it and helping to get one of the speakers and you know the things that I was doing and then it, it just it's uh, it's not really a one person job. Yes, one of the things the librarian did for us was. Um, work with the area um, movie theater to have free popcorn for the evening. So having a movie showing with free popcorn. Um, Arm picked up some um, bottled water for us to share because I don't like people to choke on popcorn. But you know, people ate and had, had that movie experience with their popcorn and their water and that was good. And um, <clears throat> you know, pretty regular, seating, rows, rows seating, that kind of stuff, Lar nice large screen in, in the particular room we were in. And as I mentioned, um, the microphones for um, the um, conversation afterward. So the logistics are, were pretty easy <laughs> with that part of it. Well, I would recommend having the panelists, if you're gonna have panelists, uh, 
have seen the video ahead of time. I did send them the link and uh, I think one or two of them had not seen it until that night. So that was, you know, it's hard to kind of take in so much uh, right away. So if they could see it ahead of time, if you're going to have panelists and just to have a good working knowledge of the different personalities and uh, that are in there yourself, if you're moderating uh, helps a whole lot too. Yeah, actually, because the students had had viewed the film and worked with the film, had written uh, in response to it, um, they had really rich things to offer, not only what they had done, but also offering like some of the other perspectives that their classmates had shared and some things that they had done in reaction to it. So some action that they had already taken in their um, school community and in the community. So they were a really rich resource because they had some interactions with it already and um, we're able to kind of draw from that and share that with the community. I wonder if I could briefly mention to our um, project. So um, uh, the National Writing Project hosts a project called Writing Our Future, American Creed, and it really invites educators to show the film in their classroom and to support the youth in discussing, discussing the film and then writing about it and then actually publishing to a public platform. So the guide that we put together, and I know it's been shared by ALA on the microsite that you all are using, that American Creed Community Conversation Guide that we put together, the last section is about um, links to that project and includes some of the resources. So if you have educators in your community that might be interested in participating in that, that's um, still open and active and um, there are lots of resources um, there for that too. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a rich body of resources. I, I do recommend taking it, looking it over and, and seeing what would work for your situation. Yeah. One thing that we were thinking about when Arm and I were brainstorming afterwards is that if we were to do this again, one thing um, that might have been useful to share may have been like a book display or something with text that, like, where do you go from here? So other things like something about how to have these living room conversations or other texts about some of the, um, the issues that are brought up in the film or even um, texts by the authors that we meet in the film and things like that. So having um, um, either book list or a book display, some things to, um, to kind of connect, right? So why are we showing this in the library kind of thing? One of those things is here are all these other rich resources and, um, ways to, to carry on the conversation and to carry on um, thinking about the issues that come up in the film. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm uh, kind of curious what people's questions are. That's great, thank you. Thank you both so much. That was uh, a lovely picture. I was, as people were um, starting to send in questions, I was trying to organize them a little bit between the ones that are sort of more nuts and bolts and the ones that are a little bit more discussion oriented. So, Of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> so real quickly, um, let me just like say some of them and then we can open up the discussion. But um, the age ranges of your participants, were they primarily adults, retired or younger? It sounded like you did have a full range. I think you mentioned that. Yeah, we had a pretty full range, but I would say more adult than not. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, did you mention how many attendees you think you had ultimately? I think the final number was 48. Okay. But somewhere around there. Great. And then, um, the que I came through question, did you reach out to local high schools and universities? I think the answer is yes. Uh, we know that you've been, that the writing projects I just want to contextualize a little bit. Writing projects work with local, um, are based at universities and work with local schools in a surrounding um, area. So um, it's, you might live actually in an area, your library might be near a local writing project site. And that would be a good way to, to build some connections potentially with local schools. So something else to keep in mind. I would add to that that, mm -hmm. um, while I did some outreach here at the university, it was it was very kind of targeted and, and specific because we're trying to do a different showing that's um, on campus, that's a campus showing, and that we would reach out to a lot more um, of the various student groups at that point. Mm -hmm. So I kind of didn't do that for this community showing because I'm 
hoping to do that this spring with the on-campus showing. And then Not just that a, I couldn't have done it twice, but still. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then what time and day of the week was it held? It was, it was Thursday, a, wasn't it? Thursday, and we started at 6. So the concert was 6, 6.30, then the showing at 6.30, um, and then the conversation after that. So that we were out of there. The library closes at 9, so you had to be out by 9. And we were, you know, as we cleaned up and, and left, we were closing with the library. <laughs> and a final sort of logistic -y question that I caught already is, um, did you require registration or how did you manage that? We did not, although most events that I've done at this particular library do. <laughs> so um, we didn't for this event. Um, and I don't know, we didn't discuss that. And I think that might be one of those things in the move from one librarian to another that could have gotten lost because mm -hmm. i know the person that we first started working with he always did registrations for everything right yeah i think annie's philosophy was more just keep it open and uh, people will come sort of like uh, field of dreams you know sort of a thing <laughs> yeah well it strikes me too because you had that singer there that some people came in that wouldn't weren't expecting to be there really that wasn't mm -hmm. So that's important to consider. And you know, I've completely forgotten this when every time we've talked about this, but one of the things that happened in the community conversation was that the head librarian had dropped in for that part. She was there for most of the film. She was in and out, but she came in at that point and the director of the libraries and she um, was mentioning an event that was coming up in a few weeks there. Um, that was really kind of designed to welcome the international students into the community, international students from the um, campus into the community. And we, I was also sharing a community composing project that we do out of the Writing Center, which is where I am housed. And it's a story core kind of project that's again designed to, designed to get cross um, conversations and to help people see that they have things in common with others as they listen to each other's stories. And so part of this conversation led to us being invited to be a part of this other event and collecting stories at that event and turns out it's an annual event so we're going to connect with them on some other events. Um, so as a person who runs multiple kind of community projects I'm always kind of cross seeding those <laughs> projects. And so this that big thing kind of came out so it was another place that conversation was continuing based on this kind of initial conversation as a result of the film. Awesome. I should have yeah, put that I, in the report. Sorry, Christine. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We, we um, were very appreciative of the panelists, by the way, and uh, just a mere thank you. Didn't seem like quite enough. So we, uh, we did get them each the book, Humans of New York, uh, stories, which I happen to have a copy of right here. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I, rec I recommend this book. It, it does promote some of the same uh, philosophy as the um, the movie in terms of starting conversations and getting to know people beyond their first impressions that sort of thing so awesome. um let me open up the floor then um these are the nuts and bolts one questions that i saw so i know i'm sure there's others out there but i wanted to, stephen posted about um how he was planning to show the film several times and then maybe have a discussion at another point. I don't, I'm not sure exactly. And then Kay Veronik jumped in. So Stephen and Kay, I'm sorry, I don't know everybody's name. Do you wanna speak to what your question is and sort of talk through what, what you're thinking? Hi, it's actually Nancy. Oh, right, that's right. Nancy, hi. <laughs> hi. Well, you know, most of our programs in the evening start at seven. And so I, I do see that there are two movies to show. You, there's an 86 minute one and maybe a 50 and I don't know so that would be one option could we show the shorter one my fear is that that's just a lot to have people sit there and watch the movie and then have time for a discussion especially if we start at seven so I was thinking I'm, I have planned to show the movie just at various times I'm planning to circulate the DVD um, you know to people and then um, I thought I see there's clips yeah. And I thought maybe it would work to just show a series of the clips and get that over within maybe 20 minutes and then we'd have time for discussion. So how does that sound? 
I think that could be really interesting if people um, can commit to coming two different times to a viewing and to the conversation. So that would that would be my only concern, but I mean, that's going to be a concern either way. So. Right. Yeah, for us, people knew ahead of time that there was going to be a conversation afterwards. So they had sort of came into it with that understanding that there was going to be a full length movie and discussion. So it is a, a kind of a major time commitment for them. Right. But uh, if they know ahead of time, you know, uh, you know, sometimes they're more willing to do that. Uh, Did you say your discussion was an hour after the film about or 45 minutes? Well, we were, we were planning on 30 minutes, but it went probably 40, 45. Did that seem like enough time? It did, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it did. It had sort of a, had a natural ending to it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my problem with the clips is that it feels like it might be just too broken up. You might not get the full mm -hmm. effect of the movie that way, but, but you know, it's, it's, um, it is be that uh, because there is a whole narrative arc. I mean, while there are a lot of, of pieces and you could do clips, the narrative arc would be missed. I right, think. right, right. Okay. Um, it does look like there's a, the full 86 minute film, um, then there's a 57 minute PBS version. So that's what viewed, um, it rebroadcast actually in November of 2018. So um, this is a rebroadcast is 57 minutes and there's also a shorter 49 minute version. So I'm not exact, and that was also broadcast on PBS. Both of them are PBS versions. So I'm not exactly sure what the differences are between that. But the um, guide that we put together and all the, the links you had for the film screenings um, have, have these files in there so you can look at and make those choices as well as as nancy mentioned there's a selection of shorts and each of those shorts i mean in our when we've seen teachers use this in their classroom they'll use the shorts for to facilitate particular conversations um, the, the, one of the differences with the pbs shorter version i know is that the, when i saw it on pbs i noticed right away that they left off the living room conversations piece yeah the whole um mm. having move on.org talk with um tea party that piece was gone i thought that was a kind of a valuable part of the movie so i i um would recommend uh, you know showing that actually nancy you had asked about living room conversations is that something that's of interest right. i mean because we, we are planning um our league of women voters is really interested in helping us facilitate those and so we thought yeah. we would try that model of just a few people did anyone um did you do that um did any does that did, has have these been held yet by any entities no not that i'm aware of we had i had a, a sheet for people to sign if they wanted more information only one person left me their email and we never she never responded when i emailed her after that and so it just sort of fizzled there so yeah i i would i think if you can get another group like the league of women voters yeah and 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 start getting uh you know larger databases of people that and then start to you know build on that but that yeah. that'd be great sounds exciting nora do you want to pop in here it sounds like you're thinking about this idea too Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> we actually had a meeting this morning. We we um, trying to collaborate here at NSU with as many groups as we can find. And last year we were very successful with something called Ten Days of Connections, which comes out of Miami and is uh, now spread to Broward County, which is basically an attempt to have community dialogues. And we had a successful program with them last year talking about um, Holocaust. And just today we met with the woman who runs this program and the league came up as a concept. We're also working with a, a committee here on the university campus called Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And we um, are going to, we're partnering with them with their programming, which we will open up to the public. And then the other concept we are working with is, of course, showing the film. And I had some questions. Uh, I put up earlier related to um, writing and reflection. I'd like to hear more about how you did that. We have a writing center here on campus and, and you know, I, I broached this this morning and we were trying to figure out what people did and how they did it. Great. Well, let me... Uh, go ahead, Chip. Though we talked about having writing as a part of, of it, it just didn't 
feel like the the flow worked you know having people stay for that much longer um you know i'm a writing teacher and would promote having writing at most events but uh i, I think have in, an in the classroom in the classroom it could work i i, I hadn't hadn't uh, tried it yet with this go ahead christina Sure, I do have an example. I was, um, so I'm based in Philadelphia and um, there was a screening and a community conversation of this film at the um, University of Pennsylvania where the writing project is based. And um, it was, it, it had a broad, it took, it had a really broad reach across the university, which was great, plus some community members from local nonprofits and other, and some students. Um, uh, it wasn't a public library context. But what they did, and actually this is, there's an example of this in the guide that we put together. What they did was hand out a one page sheet um, at the beginning of the discussion. They had some of the key questions on that sheet of paper and some space for writing. And then they, um, like uh, no, not that one, but no. it, it was more, it's more abstract. I can show it to you. Yeah, let me find it. Um, and it's it allowed people to kind of make notes during the um, while as they're watching the film if they wanted to. Um, here it is. And then as soon as they were um, done watching the film, so you see this. This is like a um, just a one page and out. How do diverse Americans understand and shape American creed? How do you express your American creed through action? How do words, symbols, or rituals express American creed? How does your family and community history connect to your American creed? And then they left all this sort of space there. So that was just a sort of one page handout they gave to people. And then they, and then the key thing is to give people some silent time after the movie. And I appreciate what Aram said earlier about like embracing that silence because there's a lot to think about after you watch this film. There's a lot that comes up. There's a lot that you might be feeling and thinking. And so having something for people, and they didn't have to write anything coherent. They could just jot notes or they could just put some ideas down or whatever. After people had a chance to silently write for a few minutes, then they asked them to turn to a partner sitting next, not just to someone sitting next to them and share something from their writing. They didn't have to read it, but they just share some of their ideas. And they used that to sort of start a discussion. So people had a chance to talk to someone next to them, and then they opened up the floor for the whole group to, 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 to talk. Yeah, so, that go ahead. That's pretty much what we did when we did the showing here with our TCs at one of our Red Cedar events. There was a, a preflection. What do you see as, you know, I, I think the prompt was, what do you see as the biggest problem facing America today? And people um, <laughs> wrote a long list of things. And, um, so then we um, then we watched the film, and then afterwards we were asked that we asked them to go back to their list and think of at least one solution, and then we then we did the, the kind of um, small group and pair conversation, and then the larger conversation, and then it went from that kind of big broad conversation to then how do we use it in the classroom? That's great. Thank you. Um, unless someone wants to jump in, I want to um, move to um, this a piece, uh, Jay Shepley, I'm sorry, I really don't know people's names, oh, Jen Shepley, um, wrote that um, she wanted suggestions on how to attract attendees with varying viewpoints, and both Tracy and Aram talked about their, both their attempts to do that, as well as um, if they had had more time, this is some of the things they would have done. I wanted to sort of open up that conversation for the whole group, because people here might have, um, among these 20 libraries, we might all have some ideas. Um, Jen writes, while our country is historically conservative, programs like this are all, um, almost always bring in an audience of like-minded attendees. So that's probably what you've learned from doing these, I mean, you all do community conversations all the time. So it would be wonderful to hear people's thoughts and suggestions. You want to want to be brave and unmute? If you're trying to talk, you should definitely unmute. <laughs> I have the 
that teacher wait time thing. I'll wait for a while, but okay. Well, there's a number on the chat, so. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. So um, on the chat, Laura says, I'm going to read these out loud because um, the chat won't be able to be viewed by others watching the archive of this webinar. So I want to make sure that we get all of this stuff verbalized. So apologies um, uh, if it feels like I'm repeating. But um, Laura mentioned reaching out to different political parties and specifically invite them. That's good mm -hmm. idea. Um, and then Nora picked up on this idea of deliberately promoting to different groups, which I know Trixie was also thinking, like, if, you know, with enough lead time, that, that would have been something to, to work on. Trying to reach out to a community college audience um, is a suggestion from Diane. I think that's really smart. Um, and uh, um, some of our colleagues are based at uh, community colleges, too, so your local writing project could be a way to connect there. Um, and, um, oh, this is interesting. So, Nora, do you want to talk about the Muslim journeys? What happened with that? Yeah, that was actually an incredibly interesting experience. Um, I had the Muslim journeys program a couple of years ago and we really struggled to get an audience and we kept pushing out and pushing out. And then I discovered this whole separate Muslim community that I just realized was suppressed here in Bra in South Florida. They really didn't rock the boat or make ways and they had their own network of newspapers. Um, and once I tapped into that, I started getting them in as an audience. But that took a lot of work, and, and the reason I found out is I went to a restaurant that was Middle Eastern and discovered a newspaper and, and then tracked it down, and, and they started writing stuff for me. So you have to really dig sometimes with uh, the community. I did a program several years ago dealing with military history and genealogy, and I ended up going to all of the, um, the oh, VFWs in the area and promoting it to them. And that's a whole subset. They don't see uh, what your library is doing unless you go to them and give them the promotional material and, and then they push it out to their membership. That's great, cool. So that's a way to reach a community you might not normally see. Those are great but recommendations. You have, have to dig, I've discovered. Yeah. I know, um, Brittany wanted to jump in too. Brit go ahead, Brittany. Hi, thanks. So going off from what Nora just said, we did a program, I'm assuming is similar. Um, it was called Ask a Muslim Anything. And we had a great turnout. And um, a huge part of that was because we approached the local um, UCC church in our town and asked if they would co-sponsor it. Um, and what we were thinking and what ended up being true is that a lot of people who are members of the church might feel uncomfortable going to an event that's called Ask a Muslim Anything um, for various reasons. And because the church was co-sponsoring it and the pastor was really good about talking to people um, during their services about this is an upcoming event, this is why it's important, and hearing it from him rather than just us, the library, um, people were um, people were more apt to come out. And so I think that, I, I could be wrong on this, and it probably depends on the church that you choose, and so maybe you reach out to a few different ones, but I think that churches are a good place to reach a big group of people that maybe have um, diverse political stances. And so that could be one group to reach out to um, specifically for this, um, this type of event. That's great, thank you. Um, it, go ahead, Arm. It, it occurs to me that one thing that Annie and I wanted to do but never got to was uh, work with some of the rural libraries, um, like have a, a showing uh, that's kind of co-sponsored by East Lansing and say Charlotte or DeWitt or uh, one of the rural libraries that might be just a little bit more on the conservative side and to kind of, kind of try and get each other to come to each other's events as a way to kind of mix it up. That's great. 
I also wanted to pick up here, um, we're getting close to time, so I just wanted to say that, um, but I also wanted to pick up here on something that Laura said in the um, discussion, because it reminded, prompted me of something. So Laura, you, you said try not to necessarily emphasize that this is a political conversation, um, and I, uh, and then laughed at yourself for that because, <laughs> you know, it's hard not to think that way these days. One thing I did want to offer though, is that in the community conversation that I was a part of here in Philadelphia, um, one of the most powerful comments, um, in that discussion was from a woman who, um, I believe is a director or program director at a group called, at a nonprofit called Abustan. And, um, Abustan is really trying to bring um, awareness to um, uh, the you know, Middle Eastern communities and cultures and, and um, uh, support, uh, they do music and art and language and all this other stuff. Um, so they're, they're a local nonprofit and very active. And um, you know, she really brought an interesting perspective in around the war in the Middle East. So the war in the Middle East comes up in the film um, Tegan is a um, is the is the um, the, the person. Marine. <laughs> she's the person. What? Marine. Was she? A yeah, marine? she's a marine, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so the war comes up, and um, and being part of American military comes up, and and um, and so a conversation started about how to represent um, different views of the war. Um, anyway, it was just, it was a powerful conversation and it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't left or right or purple or red. I mean, it wasn't red or blue, I guess. I just wanted to say it was, it was a conversation about different communities and their different perspectives. So just to, I mean, everything you guys have said is, is I think exactly, um, supports that kind of thing. And that was, that was by reaching out to sort of local nonprofits specifically that, um, she was there and was able to participate, which I thought was really powerful. There was a question, ooh, where'd you go? There was a question in the um, chat about uh, the, the National Writing Project and taking it out into the community with writing prompts that I was gonna address, but. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you address that, and then maybe we can ask Lainey if she has any final comments she'd like to make, and then I think we should um, wrap since we're we're close to the hour. But um, Christina, I'm blanking on the name of the national project that uh, Dawn works with. Youth with Voices. Youth Voices. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So a lot of what the National Writing Project does is working with teachers in schools and then trying to get their voice out. And Youth Voices is a, a national website that uh, is um, really a robust um, space for students to share, uh, high school students primarily, to share uh, their, their thoughts about uh, this topic and other issues that are important to them. And so I think one of the main foci of uh, National Writing Project is helping teachers with their uh, empowerment of students and student voice, I guess is what I would say. And um, I'll just, again, in the guide that we put together um, that's linked to your microsite, um, we talked about this project that we've been working on, the American Creed Writing Our Future site. And so um, these are, these are um, and I offer this because this is writing done by young people about um, their, um, that, that's prompted by watching the film. We encourage um, youth to, um, we have five invitations for youth to write. What is your American creed? How does your family and community history connect to your American creed? How do words, symbols, and rituals express? How do diverse Americans understand the American creed? And how do you express your American creed through action? So we invite youth to, with, their te through support with their teachers to respond to those questions and then um, ultimately when they're ready to publish to this site. Um, so we have, as you'll see, there's, um, you know, publications from all over the country 
And I offer it both because teachers that you know might be interested in participating with their kids, but also because these texts that kids are writing are really could be important pieces to share at, at your library too. So these are, you know, from the youth today writing in response to what they saw in this film. So and again, I'll put another link to it. I'll put I just put a link to it in the chat. So I know we didn't get to all of the questions, um, but I feel like um, this is a good start to um, starting to unpack some of the things we're trying to do here and support e support each other in doing this work. Um, really excited to learn from you all. Um, so maybe we could should plan some webinars once you guys do some community seeing so we can yeah. learn from you and how you organize them <laughs> um, and what you learned and what we can take away from this because this is an important um, piece of supporting dialogue in our communities around the country. Lainey, is there anything that um, you want to say before we um, close up here? Um, I don't think so. I just, um, I think the, I think it would have a lot of interest to hear about someone who actually pursued the living room conversations, if that's the right term. So we can maybe check in with the team at Citizen Film and see if there's anyone they could recommend for a webinar present that's presenter great. that that's great. done that. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that's it. Just thank you, thank you, Trixie, thank you, Aram. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us.